Hello, my name is J.F. Brandon. I'm VP of Sales Marketing at Bot Factory, and I'm here to talk about how to how to print a multi-layer PCB using Squink and our new upgrade, which is a multi-layer printing head it has UV light, and you put an ink cartridge here, and you can print insulating layers as well as conductive layers. I'm just going to quickly show you how you can take a design and print it, and then go to the next steps like picking, blazing, and soldering. But for now, we're going to concentrate on our new functionality uh, and how it works. We also have a new interface I want to show you and how it makes your life easier when you print circuits. So this is the front page. What we have here is actually the front page of um, the first page you see when you connect to your machine. I'm using a browser to connect to Squink uh, with an Ethernet line. And then the video here you see, this is an, a live uh, view of the print bed. So you can better see how the printing goes. Um, and then myself. So first step you want to do is click on start new print. And what happens is Squink acts as a server and it sends you essentially to the next step. Um, I've constrained the window file, uh, the window size a little bit so if this was larger you'd be able to see it a little bit nicer but for the most part you can see that there's six um, sort of areas that you want to uh, upload different parts of your Gerber file or image files. Uh, the first file you need is a outline file. We have here um, a uh, set of files and output uh, for an Arduino circuit. Um, and it requires, uh, it has, it's exported by a KiCad. So we have edge cuts, bottom layer, a top layer, and a drill file. Um, so for any, if you're using uh, Altium software or um, EagleCAD or um, anything else, if it exports a Gerber file or in our case a KiCad file or if you have image files, you can upload them to Squink and print the circuit from there. So the outline file is a edge cut file, so it's right here. I throw it in there, Squink generates the image right there. Now the next file I need to throw in is the bottom layer file. And uh, fortunately it doesn't render very well because I've constrained the uh, size of the window. Um, I will show you what it should look like in a normal file. It should actually look a little nice. You can see the entire outline. Um, and then the final step, uh, final files that I need is the top layer, uh, which you can see here. I'm gonna I actually just constrain this or open this up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So that's the top layer and uh, the drill file, which is a uh, .drl file. If you're using images um, and you want to make multi-layer files, uh, what Squink does is it inverts the drill file and uh, prints the insulating layer leaving where the drill hits would be uh, essentially open. And uh, that actually is that as essentially the way a via is created. Um, so you can connect the bottom layer and the top layer just simply through a, an opening, a hole. It's, it's essentially um, emulating a, a drill hit. Um, we don't have any solder mask or center rotation, we're just printing a circuit today. Um, so, uh, but you can export those things from KiCad or EqualCAD or what have you as uh, GTS or GTP files um, or you know, solder mask files basically. And center rotation files are just simply uh, .csv, .tsv, .pos files, depending on how your uh, system can export a file. Okay, so I've uploaded everything here, and what's going to happen next, oh, I simply had to press next, is Squink is going to take these files and then integrate them together to provide a preview. It recognizes more or less immediately that you're doing a multi-layer print. So it's going to be um, essentially, yeah, so we can see here, what the export, what the what the file is going to look like. So if you've made any errors uh, or mistakes in your design, um, it's going to be readily apparent in your preview, which is really useful because um, you don't want to find out later after printing that you've made a mistake somewhere. Um, so this is what Squink sees and what you will print. So you can see I can actually turn on and off the various layers. Um, here's the insulating layer by itself. And if you can see um, faint holes right here those are the drill hits. Those are the where the vias are going to go. 
Um, this is the bottom layer, and that's the first layer I'm going to be printing. So it's going to go like this. I'm going to print this, then print the insulating layer, and then print the top layer. And uh, you can see where the connections are. That's where the, uh, the, where the, where the uh, insulation is open. So there we go. I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go to the next step. Now it's asking me to attach the drill head. Um, and what I'm going to do here is simply attach it and go to the next step. Now we have to wait. Essentially what's going on right now is Squink is processing the file um, in preparation for printing. If I'm printing on a um, piece of FR4 like I have here, um, it's going to heat up the uh, heat bed to around 80 degrees. Um, so we can actually print uh, a few times with the, with the conductive ink to see if it works properly, to see if we're actually jetting with all the nozzles. But we've managed to speed up the process a little bit by uh, doing some of the basic processing right here. So you understand where essentially the, um, the, the tool paths are going. So if I take a look at the tool paths and just look at those, um, you can see that Squink is actually only going to print where it's needed. Um, before you had to print, the machine uh, would go all the way across from side to side covering exactly where the outline was going to be. Um, we've managed to make an improvement by allowing Squink to only print where it actually needs to print, which speeds up the process significantly. The other interesting fact is that we, uh, a lot of the processing uh, is going to happen while it's printing, so it's a lot faster. Uh, Squink is a lot faster than previous versions in terms of processing complex files. Um, what's going on here is it's trying to heat up to 80 degrees Celsius. Now, um, the reason we set it to 80 degrees in the preheat is to allow um, Squink to actually be able to print, um, uh, do test prints, uh, small test patterns, to see if the, all the nozzles are working. Um, generally above 60 degrees, 70 degrees, you should be able to see the, uh, what is a transparent conductive ink, essentially turn into oxided silver. It's not conductive, but it's enough to see which nozzles are printing, which ones aren't. We've included a skip functionality for you to essentially skip this sort of waiting period because it can kind of be annoying if you're trying to like, you know, wait for, up for, for it to get to 80 degrees when you could probably actually print at 60, 67 or 70 degrees and you might be able to see everything. Or in the process of preparation between, you know, getting to this page and you actually printing a, a essentially a pattern, you might have some time where it's still trying to heat up. So, you can use skip functionality and at around 70 degrees and you might be able to get a result by the time you actually start printing that, that pattern. So I'm going to press skip here. And you can see here that um, it's kind of aligned quite nicely, exactly where I would like it to be. But you can use the, um, uh, the uh, functionality here to make sure um, that you've aligned the uh, head properly. Let me actually open up the entire page here. Um, I want you to notice that I can't move right anymore. Um, essentially what we've done is we've actually restrained how far you can go uh, with the head. Um, that means that we actually have a limited print platform from doing multi-layers. It's around three and a half to 3.3 inches. So if you go to the video again, if you can see here, I'm moving it to the right. And you can only go that far, so that's about that far. It's enough to actually print the circuit that design I have, but you have to keep that in mind. There's a lot more length along the uh, y-axis. It's still six, almost seven inches. So you can print a board with multi-layer, uh, a multi-layer PCB board that's three and a half by six, maybe even seven inches if you want. If you want, there's a little bit of gimme there. Um, that's unfortunately because we've widened the head to include this UV lamp. Um, which you can see right here. Oops, you can see right there. It's uh, essentially a set of LEDs um, with a reflector inside and it's printing and curing the insulating ink. We're gonna get to that in a second. First, I wanna actually see if 
um, all my all my patterns, uh, all my all my uh, nozzles are printing correctly. So I'm going to print right now. Print a nozzle test. See what happens. Take a look. Huzzah! All of them work perfectly fine. I don't see a single one not working. That's great. I'm going to print one more nozzle test just to be sure. And we are two for two. Yep, those are perfectly fine. That's great. So I'm going to go to the next step. And what's going to happen now is Squink is going to move the head to a safe spot away from the heat bed. And we're going to wait for the next, uh, the next few minutes. Okay, it's all heated up, and now Squink is going to start printing. So you can see right here, it's going to do one of five repetitions. And you can see with now with the new update, we actually 0.26, it prints only where there's actual traces. Super important, makes things a whole lot faster. I'd say two to four times faster than previous versions. Another thing that happens right now is that Squink essentially does a resting period between routine layers. That's really important because we want to make sure that the uh, ink is actually, uh, the carrier fluid is all boiled off so that when you print again, we're not laying on too much uncured ink and ruining definition and essentially causing oxidation. We want to get as much pure silver as possible uh, pla placed onto each layer. Okay, we're done. Um, let's take a look at how these guys turned out. Um, they look pretty good, I'm seeing I have myself a multimeter, by the way, um, and we are going to touch the probes right on where the via should be. Yep, three ohms. That's one and a half. And this is also one and a half. Not bad. It's exactly what we expected to see. So at this point, I click Next. And Squink takes you to the next step. And it uh, instructs you to take out the uh, conductive ink cartridge right here. And we are going to, uh, by the way, this is what you should do for your uh, Squink if, if and when you're done. You should take the cartridge and take that piece of blue tape. This is a, a, a non-static, uh, uh, tape that's uh, really useful for keeping your nozzles clean. Sometimes people put a little bit of water on the nozzles and then cover it. That's not a bad way of doing it. Um, and then you take this cartridge here, uh, the insulating ink cartridge, and uh, we're going to put this guy to work. Alright, so... Take it to the next step, and Squink is going to reprocess the file, determine exactly where uh, the tool paths are going to go, and we're going to take a look to see if it's what we want to see for printing a multi-layer print, for printing the insulating layer, that is. Um, some people ask us what our insulating ink is made out of. Um, it's a type of acrylic, UV curable acrylic. Um, that uh, is uh, viscous enough that we can jet it in, uh, with high precision. We originally tried to make a, uh, a system whereby you would actually print the insulating ink and then you would place a lamp on top of it. Uh, we found that uh, the results were good, but not as good as we wanted them to be. From a user perspective, we felt that it would be long and annoying. Uh, from a, a general, uh, per, uh, general sort of engineering perspective, there are better ways of doing it. And we found that actually we could miniaturize the UV curing system uh, and place it on the head. Uh, one worry that we had was 
that the inkjet, uh, inkjet nozzles would get cured by the uh, close proximity of the UV light. Turns out that that was actually not true at all under experimentation. So we managed to um, build a few prototypes. We actually built the first circuits for a UV lamp using our own machine. Very cool. And then um, started testing it and trying to find the right amount of energy that needed to be placed onto the ink, onto the, onto the sort of printed areas. Um, how you know to measure how to deal with heat. There's a fan on the back of this uh, head to actually uh, keep the UV uh, diodes cool enough. And uh, we've got, been getting incredible results. High precision, very fine definition on the edges, which is exactly what you need for printing microelectronics. So here's the preview right here. The holes, uh, the, the quote-unquote drill hits, are exactly where you want to see. Um, so I'm happy with this. And I go to the next step. And what's going to happen is the same sort of thing like before. There's an align page with a uh, pattern. Now, we generally print um, at 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and for our intents and purposes, we have to wait a few minutes to get it below, um, let's say, 70. Uh, 60, 60 degrees is what we go for. Um, if your cartridge, uh, your insulating cartridge is exposed to too much heat, uh, there is a chance that you will block nozzles, you will clog nozzles. You don't want to see that. These cartridges are expensive. Um, so we recommend that if you want to skip this page, try to skip it around 65 degrees. Um, don't go to, and by the time you start printing, you'll probably get down to around 60. It takes a longer period of time at this point for us to get from, let's say, 80 degrees to 60 than it is for going 110 to 80. So in any case, if you're going to use the skip functionality, use it at certain points. Um, if you don't have the patience, uh, one option is to get a fan or something like that and to essentially drive air over the surface. Um, or if you want to put a glass of cold ice water <laughs> on top of it. No, it's not a good idea. Use a fan. We use a fan. Uh, we use one of those um, venting hoods for, for soldering. Um, they're small. You can get them on Amazon for, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 bucks. Um, and you simply place it on the heat bed and drive the heat away. Or just run an ordinary fan over the surface to get your heat bed cooler. Um, it's annoying. We understand that um, it's unavoidable, unfortunately. It's really critical that we have the right temperatures for every printing process so that you can get the best possible results. And if you think about it, we're still faster <laughs> than sending out a board to some vendor. So think of it as, as a... Uh, lesser of two evils in this case. Okay, so now we're at uh, the align page and don't move your machine, don't move the head. You wanna keep it aligned, the position it's at. Now, you're going to be doing several print tests in the process. When you're done with those print tests and you wanna go next, before going next, hit refresh. When you hit refresh on the line pages, Squink returns you to the original position, which is the original origin for every single layer that you're doing. This is super critical because you've already spent 10, 15 minutes printing the first layer. If you screw up here, you're going to have to repeat the process because the different layers are misaligned. Uh, we do have a functionality where after printing nozzle testing, click next, it will move back to the same location. But let's be a little paranoid. It's helpful. I tend to refresh this page after I do a few align tests, uh, do a few patterns. Now um, I'm going to be printing um, a few, uh, a few, a few jets, and see what happens. I have a piece of towel right here, and I'm going to essentially print on this and see what the results are like. So print nozzle tests. Oops. Well, looking at the results, all the heads jetted. I'm just going to print one more time, make sure that this actually looks OK. So, print nozzle pass. Perfect. This is exactly what I want to see. So I'm happy. I'm going to hit refresh. And what's going to happen is Squink is going to 
pick up the nozzle and take it to its original spot. And we can skip this, it's basically 60 degrees. Ta-da! This one goes back to its origin. And we know that all the nozzles are jetting, so we don't have to turn any of these guys off. So we click next. This is basically 60 degrees. Who cares about two Celsius? And here we go. Take a look at what the head does. Wait for it. Wait for it. Cool, eh? So you can see that light, that's generated by the UV head. And as it's jetting, as the ink jets are jetting out our acrylic insulating ink, the UV lamp is essentially curing it almost immediately. There's going to be two layers made here. Um, and the process of print, but the process of printing has a larger amount of overlay between each, each tool path. Uh, that's how we get as much possible, as much ink as possible onto this insulating layer and, um, and make sure that uh, none of the top layer or the bottom layer connect with each other at any point and also get the kind of requisite smoothness we need to have the board printing properly, uh, to have the board um, a good surface for our conductive ink to adhere to and conduct power through. So this is going to take a little while. The ink comes out uh, kind of very light turquoise green, and then as the heat, uh, the, the UV lamp cures it, it changes color. Um, anywhere from dark green to sort of um, almost transparent, translucent, uh, emerald-like green. Yep. So it looks really good. Now, there are some interesting things about our insulating ink that you may not know about. So is there, sometimes there's materials that we can't print our conductive ink on. Um, a classic case would be a ceramic. Uh, silicon carbide is one example. Ordinary industrial ceramics that are made of you know, uh, things like silicas. Um, those are materials that might be too porous for our conductive ink to be printed on. Um, but you can use the insulating ink that we provide to treat the surface. Um, acrylic attaches to a lot of different surfaces, uh, provided those surfaces are not so porous that it wicks away the ink. Um, so certain fabrics you might not have good results with. Certain high porosity materials you might have not have good results with. But you could print to a large heat sink, for example, made of metal. Uh, you could print to things like wood. I mean. We're experimenting with this stuff, kind of stuff soon as we uh, sort of work our way through uh, all these variety of materials. And we've tried some ceramics, we've tried some uh, materials like paper. Works perfectly fine. So we think there's quite a few, there's quite a lot of materials that you can print as long as you treat it with the insulating layer. Um, however, the way their workflow is created is designed to work with our FR4 and capped on materials. So um, you might have to finagle a certain way of actually printing on the first layer, which is the insulating layer. Um, and we're going to be developing hacks and uh, describing how you would actually treat a surface with insulating ink first before printing a multi-layer or a single layer board on top of it. Now it's getting to the point at which it should be printing over the layers. So I need to take a good look. And yep, it's leaving nicely defined holes right where the vias are going to be, which is great. That's exactly what we want to see. Um, we're about close to a quarter of the way through. So you can imagine that a print, which is about, well, this is about two by three inches, um, is going to take you about maybe anywhere from five, well, this, at this rate, probably going to take you about 15 minutes. Unfortunately, we can't actually just print. Um, you, can, you can, of course, reduce the size of the circuit. Um, in this case, you could have reduced the size of the circuit, but we tend to print over the entire layer. Now, here's a good point. Uh, we've done some experiments where we've printed only on the traces 
uh, to save time in terms of printing the insulating layer. Um, you can design an image file that will do that, make sure it's inverted, for, for example, because Squink inverts the image. Um, but we find that if it's not, if the insulating layer is not attached to the substrate or the preceding layer below it, around the trace, it's going to tend to pull off the conductive ink uh, that you're printing over. Um, it's, it's partly because this material tends to warp and change a little bit as it's cured. So don't print, uh, don't design a circuit board that let's say has limited, minimum, minimal amount of insulating ink uh, on the interleaving layers. You want to be able to have large chunks of insulating layer so that the entire circuit is held down completely and the insulating ink doesn't pull off the circuit as it cures. So that's just one thing to worry about that we've been seeing a few times. Um, in this design, uh, essentially what Squink looked at was it looked at the drill heads and it looked at the outline and essentially inverted that. So it's printing a large piece of insulating, of insulating layer, which is good. It's not gonna damage the traces. It's not gonna shrink at all. There's barely any shrinkage which is actually the, the reason why we print and cure at the same time. Now, um, the interesting thing about insulating air is, it, insulating ink is that it's flexible. So you can print on Kapton and make flexible multi-layer boards. I'm just going with FR4 because it's uh, some, I had some FR4 sitting around that I could use. Um, but uh, it's quite, I mean, if you think about how difficult it is to source good, inexpensive multi-layer circuits, Squink is for you, is the absolute must-have tool for fabricating them yourself. Okay, we're done. I, uh, while we were taking a break, I grabbed a cup of coffee. And uh, let's take a look at what we have here. So, completely dry, that's very good. Let's take a look at the conductivity. Uh, careful not to hurt yourself. The heat bed is very hot. That's good. That's good. That's good. And no conductivity. No conductivity. No conductivity. Awesome. Beautiful. It's a beautiful print. The via is exactly sized to the pad that we have in the image here. Uh, so this should be fine. So we're gonna go to the next step. And Squink is gonna ask me to put in a um, insulating ca cartridge. So pull this guy back out of the fridge, if you put it in the fridge, um, or you had it sitting around. You take off the tape, replace the cartridge, and you take your piece of tape that was on the insulating ink. Um, I recommend giving the insulating ink cartridge a bit of a wipe. Um, our insulating ink is killer, I love it. Um, works really well with the cartridges we, we employ. Um, they do very well. They do not need to be put in the fridge. Do not put the insulating inks in your fridge. They can be sitting outside in room temperature, you know, cool, dry place, typical standards for, you know, materials like this. Um, if you aren't putting your insulating ink in your fridge, if you are, that is, please take it out. Don't do it. Um, the only ones you want to put in there are your standard inks and your advanced inks, your conductive inks. So, Go to the next step, I put in my conductive ink cartridge, and same story as before, Squink is going to do some basic processing of your top layer, and uh, it's going to figure out how, where the tool paths are gonna be. Um, I'm gonna take a look at it, uh, confirm that you like it, and then go to the next step. Now, let's take a good look at what we have here, actually. I wonder if I can zoom in and get a better look because I want to be able to show you what we have here. Look at that. Look at that. That is about 
We've done some basic measurements at probably around 120 microns of ink. Uh, that's how thick the insulating ink is. Um, but look at the definition, it's beautiful. It's exactly what you need to make multi-layer boards. We're so proud of this work. We're really excited that we can get it out to you. I mean, it's been a lot of work. It's not easy to do what we were doing. Um, I mean, we've taken essentially a technology that you can buy, you know, printers that can do this sort of print and cure kind of thing for hundreds of thousands of dollars. We've managed to get it down to 4,000. So, or if you have a squinkle ready, you can buy this upgrade for a thousand dollars. I mean, think about that. That's a orders of magnitude cheaper for the same results. Um, okay, so if you see here, we've uh, got the print head. Uh, with these, this at the top layer, and this is, it shows where all the print head is, is going to go. Um, I'm liking what I see here, so I'm going to click on looks good and go to the next step. Squink is going to do some uh, heating up again. Uh, we're nearly at the requisite temperature we need, so I'm just going to skip this because I'm going to take the opportunity to print a few layers and see how it looks. Take a piece of paper or napkin in this case and uh, hold it down with my probe here. And you can use a sheet of paper, I just have something sitting around. Um, this is going to work fine. So print nozzle test. I just want to see all the nozzles printing. Now, you can't see anything. If you look carefully, you can't see anything because it's not hot. And then, like magic, it appears. <laughs> it's like turning, it's turning water into silver, basically. It's not lead to gold, but water to silver. Um, and you can see in the design, uh, the, the print, it matches what I see in my pattern right here. So that's good. I mean, we always knew the cartridges, this cartridge was fine. I'm gonna do a refresh to make sure that this head is aligned to the design. At this point, I really don't want to screw this up. Um, it's always, you know, you just want to make sure that you have to align everything. So we're done. We can click next and wait for the heat bed to go up. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to print some more. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit closer so you can see the printing process. Um, all right, let's see if we can help you out a little bit. Okay. So the process is, um, <laughs> with my camera, it's having trouble focusing on one spot. But you can generally see what's going on, right? You can see how uh, essentially what's happening is the material is deposited onto the surface. It immediately starts melting. Um, the carrier fluid is evaporated, leaving nothing but silver nanoparticles that under the 110 degrees Celsius environment immediately begin to uh, sinter. That's the beauty of this material. You can also see uh, that the top layer is uh, connecting with the bottom layer. It's printing right on top of the VS. And those holes, conductive ink is good enough that it can kind of deal with a little bit of change in, let's say, Z height. Um, it just prints kind of like a road going up a hill and should be fine. This material is smooth enough that it shouldn't leave any, you know, connection problems or anything like that. We've never seen any. But it's a beautiful thing when it prints on, on material for the first time. It's like magic. It's, whew, suddenly appears. Just like before, it's going to be printing five layers, um, which is enough 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 for getting a good conductive uh, set of tra uh, good good set of traces with enough conductivity for whatever you're doing. Look at that! Look at that! I love the result. It's beautiful.
just like before it's going to be printing and then waiting for about 30 seconds. Um, you can see the material is curing away. Even though there's an insulating layer, it shouldn't prevent any of the heat from getting there and leaving a nice solid uh, set of traces. Okay, so we're done. Check this out. Beautiful. I mean, look at the definition on this. This is a beautiful print. Um, now let's, the important question is to see whether or not it actually conducts. So let's take a look at this, whoops, at this one right here. So this trace right here, let's take a look. It is conducting at 3.6 ohms, very good. Take a look at this guy. He goes underneath right here, touch pad to pad, 2.25. Now let's look at the third one right here, and careful. That's 1.72. And if we look at some of the other guys on top, 1.5. Uh, this one is clocking in at 0 .0 0 0.87. These are great traces. This is a perfectly, this is a perfect board. It's exactly what you want to get in only a few minutes. Amazing. So um, the next step would be to uh, solder and pick in place, um, but we only have so much time today. So uh, I just wanted to demonstrate how to print a board, um, but <laughs> it's unbelievable uh, how good this guy is. So uh, once you're done printing, you essentially say, well, you know, if I just want to print the board, that's it. You simply um, end by just clicking on the home page, and that clears up your entire um, uh, setup. So if I wanted to do pick and place of this board, I would just leave it there and then go to start new print, upload the outline, and then upload the solder mask and center rotation file. Uh, we're going to get to another video about how you can just use an ordinary board or board you have like this guy uh, before and pick and place it. Uh, that's for another video. I just wanted to show you multi-layering and how amazing this is. I mean, look at this board. It's unbelievable. Um, I spent less than an hour printing this. Um, the design probably took no more than an hour or two. Um, and I mean, in a day's work, you can build a board. Unbelievable. How could you ever do that before and spend not spend thousands upon thousands of dollars getting it made for you or making a mistake and having to repeat the process? With Squink, you can build boards in no time at all, saving tons of money. It's right there. Proof is in the pudding. We have right here a vision for the future of electronics. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any more questions, please go to our contact page. Uh, links are below. Um, if you want to buy, we have a shop, we are selling Squink right now. Um, as of July, we have a three three week lead time. But take a look at the links below to check out our website and learn more about, each, uh, about how Squink can improve your job, make your life easier, teach students better, do everything you need to get the kind of, uh, kind of board you need in moments instead of waiting weeks. Thank you very much.